Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk all things Commander. And today, we have a new card type, Battles, from March of the Machine. We are going to rank all of the battles. There are actually a lot of battles in the set, so we're going to go over some of the good ones, some of the interesting ones. Uh, we're going to talk about how the card type actually works, because uh, it could be a little confusing. Uh, so joining me today is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How are you doing, Seth? I am doing good. I love battles, so I'm actually super hyped for this topic. You ready to invade the plains uh, <laughs> along with Brewer's Kitchen Phil? How are you doing? Hey, yo. I like the front side of battles, but I won't attack them a lot, so harsher grades for me on this one. <laughs> All right, yeah, we'll get into how we we're grading this. So we haven't really played with battles in Commander yet. Maybe we played a little in 60 and 40 card formats. So uh, this will be an interesting thought experiment. Uh, so before we get into battles, today's show is brought to you by Card Conduit, the easiest way to sell your magic cards. So Card Conduit lets you skip all the typing, time, and work associated with buy listing. Their curated service lets you send in as many cards as you want with buy list value one or more, and you'll pay just a 5% service fee. You can also use their sorted service where you list and sort your cards and only pay 2%. You'll get a detailed report and fast payment once your order is processed. You can get another 10% off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash Goldfish. So thank you, Card Conduit, for sponsoring today's show. If you need to sell some cards to pick up new battles, uh, Card Conduit is the way to go. And also remember to like, subscribe, follow on your favorite podcast platforms. We're on all the major ones, uh, so be sure to give us a follow over there. And uh, with that out of the way, let's talk battles. So battles a new card type. So card type like sorcery, instant, creature, etc. Uh, so it is a new type, and they're double-sided, and they're very easily uh, visible because they're horizontal. So the front side is horizontal. Uh, there is a cost associated, like all cards, you cast it, and when it, as it enters the battlefield, you choose an opponent to protect it. You and others can attack it when it's defeated, exile it, and cast it transformed. Uh, so the back side is also something. And at the bottom right, you'll see a number. Uh, that's the number of defense counters. And you can think of them like loyalty counters. So... As you remove those, uh, and there's two ways to, there's three ways to remove them, but as you remove them, uh, when it hits zero, the card flips and transforms. Uh, the way to remove them is by attacking. So you give it to a player, they're in charge of defending it, and you can send your creatures to attack it. Your opponents can also send your creatures, their creatures to attack it. Uh, any combat damage that's dealt to it removes the counters. When it takes down to zero, it's, it's removed. The other way is burn spells. So any burn spell that targets any target can target a battle you would remove the same number uh, of counters as damage uh, and it has to be any target so spells that hit players explicitly stuff like that or creatures don't work and then the third way is uh, some kind of spell or effect that removes counters uh, so like hex parasite and things like that where you can actually just remove counters off permanence will allow you to remove the defense counters uh i that is i think okay a oh, couple go, okay that, go ahead, that is Sarah. how it works couple of couple of super quick notes that i think are like kind of important one is if you play a battle you are always in control of the battle even though you're going to give it to an opponent to defend so it's always your permanent so a lot of people ask like oh what if my opponent sacrifices it or something that's not how it works it's always going to be your battle the front side and the back side of it the other thing that's uh worth noting is the only way to flip a battle is to remove all the counters in the way Richard mentioned. If you like, you control your battle and you sacrifice it, it's going to go to the graveyard. If someone beast withins it, it's not going to flip to the backside. It's going to go to the graveyard. There's no like cheaty way to actually get to the backside other than removing the defense counter. So that's just a couple of things that I've heard people like being confused about with this new card type. So yeah, D destroying it actually destroys it. So if you yep. wrath it or beast within or something, it just dies. It's gone. Sorry for the confusion. But your opponents, okay. other people can attack it, but only the person you assign as defender can defend it. What happens if you but, flip a battle just by forcing a transformation? If you turn it into your human and use moon mist, 
Uh, right. That's actually like a really fringe scenario where it would actually work. Like okay. if there's something Just. that says transform it, but you'd have to like go through a bunch of steps. So there are like some, yeah, okay. super janky, like brewer's kitchen ways. That you could flip about, <laughs> yeah, but they're unlikely to show up yeah. in, in practice. Also, like just from a general perspective, outside of political stuff, I'm imagining you're probably not going to attack battles that someone else played. Like, Richard plays a battle, it's probably unlikely that Phil and I would want to send our creatures at the battle to help Richard flip it. I guess I could imagine a world where, like, I don't know, someone's an arch enemy and it's, like, beneficial to the whole table if Richard gets the backside of the battle. But I think in general, right, like, if I play a battle, you're probably not going to help me flip it to the backside. Yeah, so all of the battles we have today to just benefit the caster. There's, like, no symmetrical effect. Uh, the, the other reason I see for attacking a battle that you don't own is to clean up with the Wrath. So you may attack a battle, flip it to a creature, and then Wrath the board, something like that. Uh, but in general, you don't want to be attacking other people's battles because they don't really benefit you um, in any way. Uh, so, okay. and so having said this, oh, sorry, Seth, uh, did you have one more point? Oh, the only other point I want to make is, like, on the battlefield, they're also permanent. So they're, like, the mana symbols are counting towards Nykthos. If you have something that's, like, a Yarion that's ex or a Brago that's exile permanent, it's returned to the battlefield, you can do that to reuse their ETB triggers. So just, just other little tricks that you can keep in mind if you end up putting these in your commander decks, like really sweet and blink decks or, like, devotion decks or whatever. They're helpful there. Yeah, and they're permanent, so you can, like, reanimate permanents. Yeah. Um, but, okay, so you basically play them. There are mythic, rares, and uncommon battles. Okay, the, the front side has some ETB, usually. And then they have some number of defense counters we've seen as low as, I want to say, three? and as Three to as seven, seven, I think, yeah. yeah. And then, so you attack it, and then it flips into something on the back side. And all of the ones we have are either enchantments... Uh, some spells, some lands that you can cast, and creatures. So basically anything on the backside. How are we evaluating them? Do we do we count the flipping? Are we just evaluating the front side? Do we holistically look at it? Like, or do you, do you, is it easy to flip these things in Commander? Or are you thinking it's impossible and you're not counting the backside? How, how was our general rating? I think Commander is yeah, the question. easiest format to flip them in, right? You don't, like, in... So so far, we played them in the early access event and in pre-release. And in Limited, it feels like you're kind of missing out on damage if you have to deal, like, six damage to a battle. In Commander, you're overkilling your opponent anyway. So if you can attack for 10, you might as well attack the battle. And you can give the battle to the opponent with the least or with the worst blockers. That being said, I, I'm i not sure. Unless the battle helps you flip itself, like if it's a removal spell or something, some of them are going to be tricky to flip consistently. And uh, with my gradings, I went like, if it helps itself flip itself, then it's better. But otherwise, some of them, it's just a, an upside that you can might flip it at some point. I, I agree with Phil that I think Commander is probably the easiest format to flip them in just because you can choose the player that has uh, the least amount of blockers, the least defense. So I think that it is the best format for it. For me, though, it's mostly about the front side. Like, the back side is a nice bonus, and there are specific battles that I think are actually more about the back side. I, I just played an Invasion of Segovia deck uh, in Standard on the YouTube, and that's one where... The backside is so strong in game ending that I think it's actually worth building your game plan around flipping it. But for most battles, I'm evaluating them. The front side has to stand on its own. Like if the front side is good enough that I could imagine putting it in my deck, that's a really good start. And then the backside is the bonus that I'm going to use some percentage of the time. My experience in other formats so far, discounting the like I'm building around flipping Invasion of Segovia, but just playing the battles fairly. I found that maybe like 75 or 80% of the time, they're essentially sorceries. And then the other 20% of the time or 25% of the time, that's when the game sets itself up in a way that I'm actually like trying to actively flip the battle. 
So I, I think in Commander, it's actually going to be pretty hard to flip them if people care. Because, yes, you can give it to the person with the least amount of blockers, but you have three people with interaction ready to stop you if they feel that flip is bad for them. Like, if someone has a maze of it, then you're like, oh, let me flip this. And like, nah. Right. But if, like, the backside is kind of meaningless, like, oh, it's a 4-4, four, four, they'll let you flip. Like, they might not waste their swords to plowshares or something, like, uh, if you're trying to flip some bad one. But if there's a game-ending siege, you basically turn everyone's removal into a counterspell. Right, like they, they all see it coming, and they can all be like, okay, you know, let's let's stop this. Or they might be like, oh, this this is kind of scary, so I'll just wrath the board, so you don't have creatures to flip your battle with, something like that. So, yes, there's more creatures, and yes, you can find the weak player, but a lot of these need a lot of damage. Um, I kind of think of Dowsing Dagger as the OG <laughs> battle, where like the the, the defense counter is one. Right? Like you, 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 you just got to hit someone for one damage and it does its thing, right? But, you know, in the early games, it's kind of easy to hit someone for one. Uh, but, you know, trying to hit someone for five or six or something actually requires some substantial effort. Uh, it's not as, you know, you're not just sneaking it in because this person played a ramp spell and they didn't play a blocker, right? By the <laughs> time you can deal this much damage, they can probably interact. So, yeah, it's going to depend on a case-by-case basis. But I actually think it's a bit tricky to flip these. I, I will also say in Commander, I think attacking battles is less painful. Like, uh, if a battle has six defense counters or something, in a 1v1 format, that's a that's almost a third of your opponent's life total you're giving up to get to the backside of the battle. In Commander, when you have three opponents, uh, each at 40 life, sending five damage, six damage at a battle to get a backside effect that you really want that's probably going to be worth it. Plus, you have a lot of commander games that end with someone doing this huge thing that takes over the game. So getting some value out of a creature or sorcery or enchantment on the backside of a battle, probably more relevant than like a random five damage or something in the early game. So I think that also plays into uh, that doesn't make them easier to flip, but it might make it more beneficial to flipping commander than some other formats. All right. So let us get into the cards. If you're not watching this on video, I recommend you watch this video <laughs> or uh, at least pull up MTG Goldfish and look at the cards. There is a lot of text on these cards. So I'm going to try my best to get through them swiftly. Remember our rating system, S, auto include staple in all decks. A, really good overall. B, good in certain decks. C, average. D, have a specific reason to be playing this. So let's start off with the Invasion of Innistrad. Uh, it's a mythic rare. Two black black, five defense counters. Flash, as it ETBs, target creature and opponent control gets minus 13, minus 13 until end of turn. The backside is when it ETBs, create two, two, two black zombie creature tokens. Pay three mana, exile target creature from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, create a two, two black zombie creature token. Uh, ratings. Phil and Richard, C. Seth, B. Oh, I'm going to this a D. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> Seth, you no. kind of like this card. What, 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 okay. Why do you even play this? I, okay, so I don't know about kind of like, but my B rating, <laughs> good in a specific deck, is that uh, about zombie synergies mostly. I think that's where this card actually can shine. If you think about zombies... This comes down and it should kill pretty much everything. It's not efficient for mana to kill anything. Even indestructible things is a little bit, well, like a, kind of a lot too much. However, it flips into multiple zombies. So it's benefiting from your lords. It's triggering your zombie synergies. It's giving bodies you can sacrifice for your combos. And in a zombie deck, usually one of your best cards is going to be Great Merchant of Asphodel. This is also a removal spell that's two black pips on the battlefield to power up your Gary. So... Outside of zombies, I don't imagine me playing this, but I don't. Would you not play this in a zombie deck? Oh, you'd be tripping. This is <laughs> really so, just let's say let's say it much. had zero defense counters. I wouldn't even play it. <laughs> yeah. oh, <laughs> it's no. like four matter removal, create two two black zombies. Like and you had to send five damage at it, and then you pay three mana to make one zombie. Like. It also that's, hates the graveyard. You feel really the animate or something. Zombies can pump out zombies like no <laughs> tomorrow, right? Like you play a ghoul called a Gissa, you're done. Like what are you messing around with all of this for? I'd play it if four it can flicker. Like, I, I think the zombies is a bit oh. of a trap. I think flickering is the good part. Still a C for me, but if you can flicker it, it is repeated removal. 
uh, not that black what? needs more removal. It is not. I wouldn't play my four mana minus thirteen minus thirteen instant speed. Is does the flip side count as the same mana cost as the front side on the battlefield? Mm, for devotion purposes or whatever, no. The mana value is the same if someone's ratchet bombing Ooh. or something. Okay. But it's it's not adding pips to the battlefield yeah, so the for your flips, gears or whatever. It doesn't even work with and, it, If you flip it and flicker it, it comes back as the front side? Yes, yes. it comes back as the front okay. side. So you can always flip. You can always flicker. I wouldn't even waste my flicker card on this. Like, you gotta. <laughs> I mean, what? Okay, okay, okay. Four I'm mana, not to. Like, you're not gonna remove anything useful. You're just gonna fire it off at some random target to try to flip this, right? Like, are you gonna hold four mana as your removal spell to attempt to keep yourself alive or something? I mean, uh, probably not. Although you're really just cycling this to get to the backside, but the backside is so underwhelming, right? It's it, the backside's not super strong, I don't think. Although it does have flash, so I think this is actually one of the easier battles to flip because people. One of the problems with other battles is you play them, and your opponent's going to be able to like prepare for them unless you have a huge board and, fl and can flip it right away. Flashing this in on the end step before you go probably gonna let you flip it, right? Not that its reward is that high. <laughs> this but is like still. the Tibble disrespect. I'm like, I'll let you flip it because I disrespect <laughs> it so hard. <laughs> oh, I figured that I'm in like, this like, round, I like you would like. Know, man. Oh no! <laughs> wow. I'm an like if that, played an if that backside was just four mana and you get the backside, would you play this? No, but I also got to kill something. <laughs> I don't think I would even play that card. Four mana. <laughs> oh, four mana instant think speed, it, two zombies, and the kill? That would, I would probably play kind of source. this. It's a yeah. sorcery 4-4 four, four, split in two twos and a removal. That seems very good, actually. It, but five it, defense is... It's, a lot. It's ravenous chupacabra. <laughs> basically. Yes. Do, do you play ravenous chupacabra? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> in Yarok, well, in Yarok I do, but <laughs> yeah, I think I think if you could like go nuts blinking, this actually has some kind of purpose. But even then, I, it might be probably one of your weakest <laughs> blink targets if you're actually just popping off blinking. <laughs> um, all right, new Phyrexia. Surely this this must be good, right? It's a Phyrexian set. So X. Blue, white. Six defense counters. When Invasion of Phyrexia enters the battlefield, create X22 white and blue knight creature tokens with vigilance. The backside is it's a fairy. It's a planeswalker. Uh, four starting loyalty, plus one, draw two cards, then discard two cards unless you discard a creature card. Minus two, you get an emblem with knights you control, get plus one, plus zero, and have ward one. Minus three, tap X creatures you control. When you do... Shuffle target non-land permanent and opponent controls with mana value extra less into its owner's library. Uh, rating wise, uh, Seth with the B again. Me, me and Phil hold it down with the C's. <laughs> Circle of loyalty, Richard. Circle of <laughs> loyalty. Christ. Think of Night Tribal with, <laughs> with Invasion and New Phyrexia. Seriously, though, Good this point. card's not bad, right? Y'all are so low on, on this card. Like, people play Finale of Glory in token decks. Like, the front side's pretty much on, right? You make a bunch of bodies. Maybe you get a Teferi eventually. The Teferi's not, like, a great Teferi, but it's, you know, it draws you some cards. It can kind of be removal. Like, I played in a token deck or a night deck. I think the question is, like, do the colors line up? That's kind of the biggest issue I have with it in Commander is, like, when I look through token decks... Blue and white's not the most popular color combination, and the same is mostly true of knights. I guess some people play the Council of the Four as a knight commander, oh. but otherwise, like, uh, most knights are, like, black-white or Mardu, so... There's a new knight precon in Esper with an Eminence commander, so oh, the they Eminence should one. have enough support. You played in that, right? And to be fair, yeah, it is a B in the knight's deck. Like, in the knight's deck, I would probably play it. The problem is I play a deck that plays two X mana, create X token cards, and this is not not even my, my top four. I play Grand Crescendo and White Sun's Twilight, but I don't know. It's sure they have Vigilance and a 2 twos, but... And ah, a Teferi the Teferi is so <laughs> disappointing, though. Teferi is <laughs> just an anthem. It's right? so like you boring. You just minus to get the emblems and... 
I, I, I originally gave this as a B because I'm like, oh, if you're knights, but blue, white are not the knight colors. Now they are, though. That, is, that I think it is a B in that case. But in all other deck, it falls very quickly to don't play this, I think. Yeah. The Teferi's not that bad. Like, it draws you cards. It's it, The removal mode's fine. Like, it can remove something. It can pump your team, or it can draw you cards. Like, the Adam is great. Kind of nice. what you want, but, like, right? Think of when, okay, so are, are, do you cast this for, like, two mana to flip? Or do you cast this for, like, oh, no, you mana? You gotta be you gotta be making like five tokens or more. Yeah, I think, so to at, really at, want at five this. tokens at seven mana, like, and then six damage later, you flip this Teferi at that point in the game. Like, what is this Teferi doing? <laughs> it's a, such a late game Teferi at that point, right? That you really draw to discard. That's a mask of memory. Like that's what we're doing with the. <laughs> I mean, so the knights have vigilance, so you can play this, make knights, use the knights to flip it, and then yes. negative three to fairy tapping some of the knights to like remove the best thing on the battlefield so you, yeah. you generous gift and then teferi's dead because you tapped all your creatures right <laughs> yeah no that's that's also teferi, true teferi's i think the emblem the wait the emblem is actually pretty good right it gives ward one and plus one yeah. plus O oh as an emblem for all your knights and that stacks so ward two is pretty much I... hex proof <laughs> for some people uh but it's it's so i don't know it's so late by the time you actually make enough knights to get this to fairy and then like just plus one plus zero that's all like you should be overrunning and winning at this point right are are you saying you wouldn't even play it in knights richard yeah, like even no. in it's knights. best case it's not worth it because you i would play orsoff knights or something i mean okay the blue is Commander. not there and if i played knights i probably wouldn't be trying to flip into to fairy i would just invasion of new phyrexia and then circle of loyalty or go to <laughs> yes. arms or something and end the game instead of trying yes. to flip it to a Teferi, right? But isn't that fine, though? Like, if you never flip to Teferi? I think that's part but of what makes... A, like, you don't want sorcery speed make a giant board that everyone's scared of. You really need it to be... You, like, White Sun Zenith is so much better because you can just end of turn make tokens and then do something. This is like Wrath check for the table, right? Like, anyone have a Wrath here? Because you're getting Wrath as soon as you cast this. Uh, so I, yeah, I don't, there's I don't, I don't like nothing that. else like a value makes, four mana uh, you do four mana create two I think two four mats. might be like enough? I was thinking of the curve where you can play this for a bit of value and flip it in an attack maybe all your knights have first strike or something and then you have it turn five minus and have an anthem so you do an anthem or like some night pumping thing and then turn four Circle you make two OP. tokens that's six damage and then you can like swing them in <laughs> i mean this but, is a lot of work for like very mediocre yeah. results <laughs> the, but the teferi is so it, boring it, ignore the teferi like they're just not another card that makes x knights like i think that's like the power of this card in a night deck there's not yeah white sun zenith is a better generic card but it doesn't make knights, so if you actually actively care about knights, this is like kind of your only option. I do agree the colors are weird. Like it not, it, it's changing. We have Esper Knight support in March of the Machines itself, but traditionally, you know, blue and white isn't knight colors. But I, I still would play this in a knight deck. I think just as a sorcery in a knight deck, it's fine. Okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. It's like the 99th card. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, white. doing it. <laughs> Wait, no, that. Deck. Oh, does that mean Circle of Loyalty gets cut then? It gets bumped? Because that was the previous 99? <laughs> I think I would take Circle of Loyalty over. I'm not. <laughs> this is a tough Okay, you, you guys got to like this next one. This next one's great. All right, Ravnica. Five generic mana. Four defense counters. When Ravnica enters a battlefield, exile target non-land, permanent, and opponent controls. That isn't exactly two colors. The backside is whenever you cast a spell that's exactly two colors, look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a card that's exactly two colors from among them and put them in your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. All right. Phil and myself, Bs, we're, we're just on point here. And then Seth, always a grade up, A. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this just like the best colorless removal spell? It's five. Whoa, mana. whoa, whoa. And so I mean, it's colorless a sorcery though. that has a restriction. That's a, <laughs> a you would play this in a non like Niv Visit deck. So I, I think Mean Phil Fanez B is like if you're playing a, a guild 
like a two color guild deck or something. This thing is pretty good, relying on the backside. But Seth, you would just play this in a generic deck. I mean, it gets rid of mm, pretty much anything. Yes, I guess exactly two colors could be a downside. Like maybe it doesn't yeah, get the Marari's nice. Wake or something. But like, I would assume this is a colorless deck staple for sure. And then wouldn't it be in the conversation for like mono blue or like colors that struggle to remove permanence on the battlefield? Like forget the backside that you're never going to flip it. You don't even want the backside because you're not playing two color cards. But like just as a front side, wouldn't you play that just to like <laughs> exile something? If you flicker it, maybe hype <laughs> mana <laughs> sorcery. That is fine. But it's called like, like, we're in like spider ishash territory. Yeah, yeah that's like seven. That, right? That's like, two more mana. Scour from existence. That's seven mana. I, I like, think I would just play a counter spell and hope, <laughs> <laughs> hope that's good or a bounce spell, like a capsize and call it a day, right? Would I really play five mana sorcery speed removal <laughs> in blue? I. I wouldn't underestimate the backside too much. Like, I looked through my two-color deck, which is only one, and I just randomly play, like, 10 to 12, is it, like, uh, Simic spells, including my commander, maybe even more. Uh, so the backside might trigger just in a generic um, two-color deck, and there's, like, two-color Boros multicolor Tribal, I, I forgot the commander, but in this one, I might play it as well. Um, I mean, the back the back is great if you're Niv or, wow, I can't think of the General, General Ferris Rocker. Yeah. That's a Boros one, yeah. Like, if you're a deck like that, the backside is kind of ridiculous, right? But so, I, and is I, the front side is used, so here, here's the weird thing about this card. When you want the backside... The front side, you're just firing off at any permanent you yeah. can target. Like, you, you don't care, like, how high value it is. Like, it's, like, basically useless to you, right? You're just trying to get this to flip so that removal isn't as good as it sounds, right? It's not your generous gift that you're holding because you're like, oh, I actually need this backside. So you're just firing off this removal on some random crap you don't care about and then trying to get to the backside. So it doesn't work as nicely as, like, a flex slot as we think it does because you're kind of shoehorn into playing it early it is awkward that the decks that most want the front side don't care about the back side and the decks that most <laughs> want the back side don't really care about the front side like that is very awkward it's just only four defense counters though so it's not not a huge number yeah i mean and any 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 guild deck like niv visit type decks i think this card is really good but i'm not with <laughs> seth on the generic are mono just... blue invasion of ravnica that's uh <laughs> y'all are just battle that's, haters that's... <laughs> Uh, okay, okay. Chandelar. Three green green. When it enters a battlefield, return up to three target permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. The backside is an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. All A's across the board. We've hit consensus. Hey, uh, there's we did no it. way this is the same level as Ravnica Seth. How can you both <laughs> the <best> A's? <laughs> okay, here my question for you with this is. Do you even care about flipping this? Yes. I know it's like a funny, fun yes. meme or whatever, but like, really? So You're playing cool it to flip? They're both really good. They're, like, the, the reason why this is an A is the front is good enough that you don't need to flip it, but the back is so good that I think you go out of your way to flip it. And it's only four damage. It's not even like that out of your way to flip it. Ooh. And I guess you can put a land into play with this as well, right? To like ramp each turn if yeah. you wanted to. Like it's any I mean, it's permanent. It's permanent. You can put a 10 drop into play. Like this is... Absurd, right? But the front side stands on its own, right? Like three permanents back to your hand, like harmonize is what? Four mana draw three. This is five mana draw three, but you have a lot of control over it because you're choosing permanents from your graveyard. Even that seems like good enough. And yeah, then you just, get the this the backside seems very fun. Like I know Phil's gonna put omniscience yes, into play yes, or something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Another reason omniscience. to kill Phil kind first. <laughs> Uh, so I played a five mana card from Ravnica Allegiance sometimes, which is return three multicolor permanences or uh, spells to your hand. And I tried building around this because a three for one out of the graveyard can be super good in the late game. And this one is way less restriction. And the backside is, I mean, with this one, the backside is actually worth throwing some creatures under the bus for. So. This is one of my few A's. I think I gave two A's. This one I want to believe. I always gave it a B 
because technically you could get cheaper cheaper rate on the front side but man the back side is so crazy when it works i think this is the best battle in my opinion because the mm. back side is actually really strong like I, the front side can do nothing and it can be like five mana blank try to flip for four damage and then you get the back side i think that's still a respectable card <laughs> so the fact that the front side can draw you three cards is actually very good it's like just imagine dropping an omniscience that like makes all this effort worth it right as that's true when you making you know three two two zombies or something ridiculous like that right you're actually <laughs> <laughs> you're actually like that was winning <laughs> the game but you jump through all these hoops oh uh, i mean people are gonna see it coming right like because you're gonna yeah. flip it and then you gotta wait a turn to your upkeep to actually put something into play so like there is a bit of a unlike an omniscience or something where you just plant and dump your hand there is a little bit of suspend one going on but still like good front side good back side like good battle overall all right tarkir one in the red five defense counters when an ETBs reveal any number of dragon cards from your hand, when you do, it deals X plus 2 damage to any other target where X is the number of cards revealed this way. The backside is a 4-4 flying trampled dragon with whenever a dragon you control attacks, it deals 2 damage to any target. Uh, B's across the board for us. We're also in agreement here. I mean, this card's great, right? Like, I, I think this is a very very strong battle but it's i think kind of by definition a b because you really got to be dragon tribal but in dragon tribal the front side should be like four damage maybe the uh, like on average like that's enough to kill things it can also hit face can also flip a battle if you want to and then the back side's legitimately scary in a dragon deck if you have three or four dragons each of them shocking every attack plus dragons have some extra combat uh extra combat step dragons it seems like you just win the game in a turn or two if you flip it. So outside of dragons, horrible, but in dragons, like auto include, right? Is there yeah. any reason you wouldn't play this in dragon tribal, like or dragon or whatever, Miram? Because dragons are really good. <laughs> 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 dragons are dragons, expensive, you're like, though. Oh. <laughs> All of these are game ending threats, and that's what makes the dragon <laughs> deck really good. Uh, the, the, so the the thing this has over all the other stuff is both sides help you flip more battles. So if you are a battle believer like Seth, uh, the invasion of Tarkir can flip battles and then your dragons can also flip battles on attack. Um, but there's not many good battles, but uh, <laughs> if you do want to flip them, here you are. <laughs> also nice that most dragons are pretty strong and flying. So flipping this one should be okay in the deck you're playing this in. Not like throwing zombies oh, yeah. on there like most dragons have five power by themselves yeah dragon and they're flying and hasty like yeah. a dragon deck should be able to easily flip this if it wants to all right so those are our five mythics we had all stars we had like one <laughs> consensus a there's some b's and some c's it's not looking good guys we need we need we need the rares to, the rares to pull it off here uh alara who doesn't love five color stuff Okay, so Alara is Wooberg, so one mana of every color. Seven to flip is the most expensive thing to be flipping. When Alara enters the battlefield, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile two non-land cards with mana value four or less. You may cast one of those two cards without paying its mana cost. Put one of them in your hand, then put the other exile, the other cards exiled this way at the bottom of your library in a random order. The backside is a sorcery. Uh, it's all colors. Target player draws two cards. You may put an artifact from your hand onto the battlefield. Create a token that's a copy of a permanent you control. Distribute three plus one plus one counters from among one, two, or three creatures you control. Target Destroy target permanent and opponent controls. And uh, that's a lot of text to <laughs> so say many C's words. from me and Phil and B from Seth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this card's sweet. You really don't like the value. Just think of the value. It is sweet, yeah. Comes, you draw two. You get to play one for free. And then, I don't know if you ever flip it because seven defense counters is like infinite. But if you do, it's like a 10 for one or something. You blow something up. You draw a bunch of cards. The only problem I have with this is like I was looking. So when I was doing doing our tier list, I was actually looking like, OK, what deck would I play this in specifically? 
that's where I kind of got a little stuck. Like, it's going to be at its best in, like, a five-color blank deck or something. But if you look through the five-color commanders, I guess if you just want to play five-color good stuff, it would be fine. But a lot of them are, like, Joda is a Legends commander. Goshintai is a Shrines commander. Uh, the Ur Dragon's a Dragon commander. Sisei is a Legendary commander. Like... I'm not sure what five color commander this actually like has a home in. Ramos is probably the number one answer, like because it's five colors and it works with Ramos and you get all the mana back with Ramos. But I still think the card's good just from a value perspective. No, no, nice. not it's sold. like collected <laughs> company. Like, do you, like I don't know, man. Five man. Are you, like, are you playing that many mana value four or less spells off the top? I'm gonna hit my another battle. <laughs> uh, hey, you could Superman. hit one you cast as one for well, free, setting. so it's like kind of on rate, right? It's five yeah. mana, and then you draw one. But uh, and then the backside is just a whole lot of stuff. Uh, the backside is cool. Seven damage. Good stuff. Seven damage. Yeah. I In mean, five the only, color. The only interesting one is create a copy. What? Oh, so the, the the thing we didn't mention was there's a rules update. Uh, when you copy a double sided card now. Uh, the token is double sided, so you can actually copy a battle and then flip a battle now. Um, still, I don't, I don't know. It's just like a like put three plus one plus one counters, destroy some well, random thing. Like I, I mean, you're you're re that's the worst mode. So you draw two, you okay. get to put an artifact into play for free, which whatever. Uh, get a token copy of something and destroy okay. something your opponents. That's at least a four for one. Even if you discount the counters and the artifact from your hand, the artifact could be a portal to Phyrexia. Okay, what, what if I just cast it could be a portal? Mm -hmm. Now that you say like that, <laughs> five colors. Like I could just play like literally like any ultimatum and just call it a day. <laughs> yeah, five. So, uh, okay, could play prismatic bridge or something is my problem. So five color. If you can play this, you're playing five color. So that's not really a restriction. But if you compare it to other Wooburg cards, ooh, there's some bangers. Like if you play Wooburg Tribal, I guess this is an auto include, but the other options are like, ooh, Prismatic Bridge is crazy. Uh, yeah, I can't true. even think of other stuff. I don't know. Maybe it's a B just because every <laughs> Wooburg card it does something unique in any deck. Seven defense is so much though. <laughs> like, uh, you can miss on the front side and then dealing seven is tedious, especially if this so, one, that's the... So you can't miss, right? Because you just keep... Yeah, I mean, you can two, hit two nature's laws. I mean, you, you can also I mean. use this as like really bad demonic consultation, right? And just yeah, <laughs> you could. Build, <laughs> build your whole library. No, but you can't. You have to have the Thoracle in hand. It's, uh, oh, it's okay. two cards, though. You can have one Thoracle. Uh, what so, about like glimpse glimpse to tomorrow dot deck fill like everything costs so much that you know you're gonna hit the glimpse mm -hmm. and then you shuffle everything in Ooh, and this eh? is a permanent thing so the problem is Richards was, was saying players can stop you from flipping the battle this is the one where players will use their removal to stop you from dealing seven which is already hard enough yeah i like the idea of uh glimpse but <laughs> four is kind of rough like a rough cutoff it, to build your deck it's also out. worth <laughs> also worth mentioning you have to cast the backside so it's also possible they're just like sure spend all your time counter flipping spell. it oh, and then they yeah like counter spell or swan song it or something so <laughs> okay maybe 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 it's not a b i just really love this card i really love this I, card but i am it, having a hard time to figure a specific deck that i would put it in but it's one of my favorite battles when, when but i'll, you pull I'll it give off, it a c it will be glorious right? oh, it yes. will be <laughs> when, when you pull it off but it's very difficult um arcavios i don't even know what plane that is who's from arcavios uh three blue blue are also seven defense counters uh, when an ETB search your library graveyard and or outside the game for an instant or sorcery you own, reveal it and put it in your hand. If you search your library this way, shuffle. The backside is whatever you cast an instant or sorcery spell from hand, you may copy that spell. You may choose new targets for that copy. Uh, oh, interesting. Bs from Phil and myself. C from Seth. So Seth actually... Yeah. Boo, oh, boo, this. Arcavios. <laughs> it's Strixhaven, by the way, by the looks of it. Oh, is oh, that, is that, is? Is that Strixhaven? I mean, what, what is Strixhaven, then? What does the word Strixhaven mean? I guess it's just a region or something. 
Wait, I mean, that they makes sense, like but the there's, college or yeah, something, there's yeah. co- like characters from Strixhaven on oh, the yeah, artwork. Right. So yeah, this is, this is Strixhaven. Should be. Yeah. Okay. So th- wait, you guys, so you guys like this card more than me. I'm assuming you're putting in a spell slinger sure, deck of yeah. some kind. When I read this, it seems pretty bad. So the front side's five mana to tutor, which is two mana more than like solve the equation or way more than mystical tutor or whatever so it's a very expensive tutor and then the backside you get oh what's the seven mana blue enchantment that does the exact same thing like uh double the, vision. We, we have just yeah double vision or the uh, there's a blue one too but like we have cards that are just the backside if you're a spell slinger deck how are you gonna flip this like wouldn't you rather True. just play a good tutor and play double vision than play like a bad tutor and a double vision that you got to deal seven damage to to get to it like to me this just Burned seems it. like <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, good okay, point with yeah. the seven toughness there i was trying to be generous seth but i'm very easily talking you down to <laughs> yeah i might have this etsy as well i didn't see the seven <laughs> it does spell slingery things like five like, so the the other thing is it can fetch from your graveyard uh, so oh, that's you can true. reuse you can reuse your big spells uh, outside the game is kind of useless in commander currently so that doesn't help it is sorcery speed it is pretty <laughs> seven is a lot you I can mean, blink it though but you can blink so it. much in a spell slinger mean, deck hmm. i would so if i'm playing like a low powered casual spell slinger deck i think you can play this for fun and it'll be okay but i think that like I don't know. I'm still on the like, I'd rather, if I'm trying to be a little more competitive, play a cheaper tutor and just play a cheaper enchantment that's going to automatically double my spells or play a, there's so many ways to copy your spells these days. Like, it seems cool to go off with though. Like the dream of like, play this, get extra turn spell, flip it somehow, take a bunch of turns. Like it can definitely do things. Once you can copy all your spells, crazy things will happen. Yeah, I put it down to C. Uh, I can't believe I'm talking y'all D. out of battles. I'm <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> all right. Um, Fiora. Oh, these are all rares, by the way. So you, you're at least expecting them to be like somewhat good, right? Uh, four black, black. When Fiora enters the battlefield, choose one or both. Destroy all legendary creatures. Destroy all non-legendary creatures. Four defense counters. The backside is Marchesa. Uh, Menace, Death Touch. Uh, when it attacks, remove all counters from up to one target permanent at the beginning of your upkeep. If you haven't been dealt combat damage since your last turn, you draw a card and you lose one life. It's a 3-6. This is one of the battles Bees I was tempted. For me oh. and Phil, Seth that A. Is Seth trying to get S out of here? I was, that's what, about, <laughs> what I was about to say. This is one of the like two battles that I could see an argument for S-ing. Isn't this card... A, okay, so we're playing Commander. The best wrath is what toxic deluge three mana damnations four mana like if you're in black that's kind of the going rate so this is a little bit expensive but you do get the flexibility you can maybe like blow up your opponent's stuff keep some of your stuff thanks to the ability to choose legends non-legends or both and then the backside i think is actually a very powerful creature like marchesa removing all counters every attack can flip a battle or kill a planeswalker and it draws you a card each turn and it has like kind of a reasonable body isn't this just good? Like, is this not a good magic card? If you build That's around it, bring it down to a C. <laughs> oh, so you can blink it with Aminatu. But that's all build around. Like, I think the problem is that every mode of this has cheaper options. Sure, if you build around legendaries or around Machesa doing anything, like most decks don't run planeswalkers or battles to use this with. Like all all parts of this card. Uh, build arounds. I guess if you can flip it, it's a repeatable board wipe, which is actually interesting and maybe something we haven't seen yet. Permanent I, board I, wipes are it's like it's really good rare. in a legendary deck because yeah. you can attempt to wipe the non legendaries out. But like if you're just trying to do this for value, chances are people have legendaries and non legendary creatures, so it's hard to get out, a yeah. like a an asymmetrical wrath going. Six mana for wrath is not good. The backside just gets you killed. So in 1v1, <laughs> I think it's reasonable for you to draw a card every turn with this. This ensures that people will start trying to like nickel and dive you for damage so that you don't draw the card. And then you can flip battles. But so far, most of the battles are kind of suspect. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure Says what you. we're trying to <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, Phil, <laughs> you... Not bad. Uh, 
You both love Decree of Pain. Y'all played Decree oh, of Pain. Yes. yes. Isn't this just Decree of Pain? Like, for oh, less what? mana? What? Like, it is eight mana, Wrath the Board, and draw like 10 cards. Yeah. Yeah, but you're drawing all your creatures that you get to keep on the battlefield when you get to choose the most uh, optimal option of the Usually legends I'm not and non legends. Playing a Wrath if I have a lot of creatures <laughs> on the battlefield, if I can have it. So wait, uh, you wouldn't just play this as a generic wrath then? Too much mana? Oh, Only in budget. Like, uh, heavy is this budgets. even cheap? I don't know. Is this Maybe budget? in a no, few this weeks. Is cheap. Uh, y'all are this depressing You would me. play this in just a bit so around. You have Toxic you... Deluge. Yeah, Damnation. You have Damnation. Crux no, of Fate. Crux of Fate? Yeah. Like... I'd play this over Crux unless I was Dragons. Boom probably. Pile? The Vinral's Disc? <laughs> boom Pile. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely, I've tried your Boom Pile before, Richard, at my last Command Fest, and I definitely lost two coin flips and died, so I'm off the Boom Pile train. <laughs> Get good. I mean, uh, all right. I mean, maybe maybe six mana is a little too much, but the flexibility. I, I feel the flexibility the, doesn't matter because there will be both creature types on the battlefield most of the time. Yeah, so I, I, guess I feel true. like you, you, it's not like a kindred whatever wrath where right. you can actually like one sided wrath quite easily. I think this is very difficult unless you're playing all legend. Like if you're playing a legendary deck, then you can probably use this. But if you're playing like a normal deck, well, you get to like pick off two commanders, and then that's six <laughs> man six mana. Pick off two commanders, or you know, remove all creatures to keep your commander, but everyone else keeps their commander too. Like that's just. <sighs> Like single combat or something, right? So, eh. All right, I'll I'll put it down to B, but I will say if you can blink this with like yeah. not to or like have synergies for yeah. it, I think it's I actually think like like very this. very You good. just keep blinking this every turn and wrapping oh. the board. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah hooray. I think this should be the first <laughs> complete board wipe that's blinkable. I think there's a Reaver Demon, but that's on a cast ETB. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, Portal to Phyrexia is close, but this one should be... So close. Uh, so so we, we have a little metric here of, like, pre-order prices to kind of give you an idea of, like, how hype you think people are about this card. Uh, this one's about two bucks. Innistrad was four bucks. Tarkir is, like, 12 bucks. New Phyrexia is six bucks currently. So you can kind of get a rough idea of how how hype people are for these cards, and also like standard affects this. But you know, just a little rough idea of what people are thinking. About That's because everyone's saving up for the one of five hundred Ragavan, Richard. No one's got money to spend on battles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, Gobacon. Uh, one in a white, three three defense counter, so very low. Uh, when it ETBs, look at the look at target opponent's hand. You may exile a non-land card from it. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owners may play it. A spell that that is cast this way costs two more. And then the backside is beginning of your end step. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature that attacked this turn. Sacrifice it. Creatures you control gain hexproof and indestructible. Uh, C's for myself and Phil. B's for Seth. <laughs> Wait, you don't like this card, Richard? To me, this oh, looks like it. a very Richardy. This looks like a very Richardy battle. You're always playing these white decks with evasive creatures. Think of birds. Think of birds. The front side sucks. Like honestly, <laughs> if you could, if you could erase, like stifle the front side, it would be better because you're just gonna annoy one person and you have to choose one opponent to like take a card from their hand. If the front side would just blank, it would actually be stronger. But isn't this like? Two mana, you're a deck with a bunch of creatures, you can easily flip it. Isn't the backside worth it? Like, even just completely disregarding the front side, isn't the backside just strong enough that you would play that? No, because it's so slow and paints the target on your back and lets everyone know your combat trick, which is like sitting there on the battlefield. So they, they know not to wrath you because that thing is there. And they know that every turn your army is getting slowly bigger. So your two power worth of birds becomes like four power <laughs> next turn. And then, you know, whatever, everyone sees it coming. I don't think it's worth a card slot to do this. And like you said, the front side is kind of useless in Commander. So this is like a lot of mediocre uh, cards. Like I, I'd rather just play um, the the free indestructible card, like the Fairy's Protection or something. Or I'd rather play... Uh, an overrun effect rather than this card which just puts everything on the battlefield and lets everyone see what's coming 
Mm. You wouldn't play it, Phil? <laughs> yeah, so I guess in birds I'd run it. It is really not my play style to attack <laughs> yeah. and stuff. This is not a Phil card. Uh, <laughs> it is very good in 60 cards. Uh, so if this trigger would hit every opponent, I guess I would grade it up to B and say play it in your tempo flyer style decks. The problem is you're like having a, uh, what's it called? Uh, heroic intervention lying on the battlefield, pretty much. I don't know. I mean, your board grows and they have to wrath you at some point and then they know they can't wrath you. Maybe they just try to kill you then. They just kill you. Yeah. <laughs> I, birds. I, <laughs> that's a weird way to grade this card. Maybe it's maybe it's a C plus for me. This one was really... Uh, I guess I try it in some decks. It is pretty cool when it flips and you can attack every turn. Um, if you can attack every turn in Commander, it's going pretty well, though. So, not sure if you... I guess in this case, it's... you need board wipe. Yeah, hmm. yeah, this one I would have to play test. Or somebody has to beat me with it. I guess that's mm -hmm. more likely. Maybe I'd... All right, best that's for you, I will put it in birds. For yeah. Two yeah. Days, and then it's only... Oh. Remove it afterwards. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> it's... It's only three defense counters. I would play this in any go wide deck. Mondrak, Jetmir, uh, Reese. Like if I'm going wide and can benefit from those counters, I'm I'm all in on this one. I will I will just try to choose. I don't even know who to choose with the front side. Crib. I wish it. Yeah, yeah you, I guess you that's choose crib and choice. you tax his wrath. So that you can actually flip this to protect your board, but then you're gonna see that he has two wraths in hand, and this is useless. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Ixlon. So Ixlon, oh no, sorry, Ikoria. Uh, Ikoria is also an expensive rare. It's like $9 right now. So people are very hyped for this. So uh, X green green, six defense counters. On an ETB, search your library and or graveyard for a non-human creature card with mana value X or less and put it on the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle. The backside is an 8-8 eight, eight reach. For each non-human creature you control, you may have that creature assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. It's Zalortha on the back, by the way, Godzilla. Isn't this card great? It's my only A. Right? Not, so A for Seth and Phil. So Seth and Phil are finally in agreement. I'm uh, hanging back at B. <laughs> Good in certain decks. Okay, so the the front side, it's finale of finale of devastation with the Ikorian downside of not being able to hit humans. Oh, it's uh, on the upside. I guess you also, damage. yeah, I guess uh, yeah, Phil always has 12 mana, yeah. so he might actually get the overrun mode, but <laughs> yes, you don't get to overrun, but you do get an 8-8 eight, eight dinosaur, potentially. What about, like, Green Sun Zenith? Green Sun Zenith, so if you look at EDH rack, finale is in 9% of decks. Green Sun Zenith is in 8% of decks. That doesn't have the upside of, like, overrunning. It is one mana cheaper, I think this deck's really good. I or this card's really good. I like that it adds two pips to the battlefield for Nick Those. I like that it um it lets you play the toolbox plan. Like it's a it's an efficient tutor and it like is there an argument for not playing this in a green deck with a bunch of creatures? I feel like I would just jam this for value. Finale is better. Green Sun Zenith is better. The Court of Calling is better. How many more, like, how many X tutors do you need? I don't know. Is it finale like the same thing except you don't need to deal six damage to flip? Like, essentially, all your creatures are unblockable and you kill someone, but the finale thing is like the same, right? If you if you have the 10 mana or the 10 for X. E yes. This can't get Ewit, by the way, which is yeah, like non human. Get, there's some utility humans a restriction. Too that we need. No tie this trick. The so backside good. does kill it people. It is good. Like, your entire team being unblockable or dealing damage, although it wasn't blocked, like, that just probably one shot someone, I would assume. Yeah, but everyone sees it coming. <laughs> like, everyone sees you with the thing here, and they're like, oh, we let this thing yeah. flip, then we're all going to one shot the next turn. Unless you get a vampire hex mage and flip it right away, which is, it's not a human, so you can play f four mana, have an 8-8 eight, eight big dinosaur <laughs> these are a lot of steps for a crater hoof <laughs> I mean, isn't, no i mean it's only isn't one step like, the other one is in your deck so isn't it's, that just worth it i like, think that's what i think like that's the that's the downside you do have to be in Golgari to make the color identity stuff work but i feel like 
Vampire Hex page is not what? so embarrassing that you can't. You're, you're missing you can't the part where you need it. enough power to like kill people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like through no blocks, like. Hey, that Trader Hope stop, gives though. you the override effect to actually give you that power, right? This just this makes your creatures eight. unblockable. But I mean, you can do that for four mana. You don't need to spend like ten mana to get a hoof or whatever. Like four mana is not that much to get a. Then I hit you with my solo and call it a day. <laughs> like I don't have enough power to kill you. <laughs> yeah, but you got an eight eight. That's a that's a pretty good reach. creature. No, but it doesn't eight, have haste. Eh? You can't you can't like same turn swing with it. Oh right? no, that's. No, no, you can't. Yeah, so if, you're, if your plan swing. is to tutor up Hex Mage and then flip this immediately, you're attacking with something else. Yes. Or you just like wait and flip it before your next end step. But still, like an 8 8 on turn four, I guess it's just a big creature, but still, that's a pretty big uh, creature. Can I give you Hunted Horror Seth? Like, do we, do we, <laughs> do we need turn four 8 8s? You can't count up I mean, the big I mean, don't get me wrong, but would you just put it in generically every green deck? It, like, you can't count out the. It is pretty much unblockable. It is a bit, maybe even better than, not better I, than Kratos actually, but it is pretty game ending. So I think it's worse than Finale, but I think so there's room to be record? worse than Finale. Uh, I put it over Cord, I think, in most decks. Okay. Mm. Uh, and then I think Green Sun, eh, I don't know. Green Sun might be better, but it's it's close, I think. I put it. I need to look at the top green creatures to see. <laughs> that are not humans. Human. So, in non, non human reliant, non combo decks, I'd put it over Quad. Otherwise, Quad is better, I think, because of instant speed. I like it in just beatdown decks, just ramp into big green creatures, get a Kogla, smash something, swing into this, get a zero, zero a big thing, and uh, just just smash face. That seems pretty good. And in this case, it's yeah. it's definitely more fun than just Green Sun Zenith, which isn't... In- I mean, it's more fun than Crater Hoof, right? Like, yeah. I yeah. beat you with Godzilla. Something, yeah, <laughs> it is very fun. It's the only A that I... Really gave an A. The other one is like, oh, I want to believe Chandler is good. But this one, <laughs> this, that's just at least a very okay. close to top Speaking five. of I want to believe, we have a spicy one here. This one's Ixalan. Uh, Ixalan is two mana. It's green. Uh, four defense counters. When the ETVs look at the top five cards of your library, you may reveal a permanent card from among them and put it in your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. Backside is a 4-3 dino. When you cast a spell, it gets indestructible until end of turn. Seth has it as B. I think the lowest thing I've seen. I know he's given some Cs, but B for Seth. Myself and Phil, D. This is the biggest discrepancy thus far. Seth, what deck is this good in? <laughs> so this is like the most averagest of battles, but it's good in basically any deck, right? Like, so two mana to dig five cards deep. We see that same effect on, like, Grizzly Salvage. We see that on Once Upon a Time. We see that on Commune with the Gods. Like, that's kind of basically the going rate to dig five cards deep. So this takes five cards deep. It grabs any permanent, which is more flexible than a lot of those that are grabbing, like, only an enchantment or a creature or a creature or a land. So this can be digging for what any, uh, whatever permanent you want. And then you're never going to flip it because the backside is, like, kind of useless. But then it just adds mana symbols to the battlefield. They're like, and maybe in the future you can blink it or maybe you draw your Nykthos or whatever. So to me, this just seems like you can play it in any, uh, not Spell Slinger, but any deck with a lot of permanents and it's going to be, like, fine. Uh. No? It's a two mana cantrip. It's a two mana cantrip. It's a grizzly salvage and random non graveyard decks. Like <laughs> you do lose the downside of filling your graveyard. That is that is true. A two mana <sighs> cantrip is not. So instead of on turn two, instead of casting rampant growth, you invasion of Ixalan for a Sakura tribe elder. I guess because it has to be a permanent. <laughs> like that's a real cost. <laughs> To do what, though? You're not even flipping it. You have to flip it, though. Otherwise, why are you playing this card? (laughs) To to dig for better battles, Richard. To dig for better battles. (laughs) Like, Seth is all about the Nykthos plan, and he needs that one pip, like, very hard. And he's going to sacrifice turn two to get that one pip. (laughs) I mean, that kind of makes it a free spell, right? Like, it is once upon a time once Nykthos gets going and that pip starts adding up. (laughs) 
Is, <laughs> did people play Once Upon a Time? <laughs> I'm curious. No, not really. It's like 1%, but they should be playing it more. Grizzly Salvage sees play, but that's mostly in Graveyard decks. Graveyard, like Tater Wayfind. Like, th th those cards do see play, but usually they're filling your graveyard. So if this card filled your graveyard, I think it would be a lot more playable, but it doesn't. It just cycles into <laughs> a random it's, top five card that has to be a permanent. Imagine so it was like explosive vegetation rampant growth or something. How sad would you be? You just get a land and call it a day. It grows your goif, Richard. It's a green battle that grows your goif and digs for your goif. This is, the, and it's average. It's like the jundiest of battles. Oh, God. It's also a 4 3 in the back. For some reason, like that creature is so mediocre, too. It can't yeah, be a 4 4 or something, yeah. a 4 5. Like, why does it have to be a 4 3? It is, uh, it that is would be kind pretty of good just like a very sad creature. Constructed, though. <laughs> I think if the you still holding my B Seth. <laughs> All right, I'll, do, I'll go to C. I'm not going to D. I'll I'll drop it to C. I'll drop it to C. D for dinosaur. <laughs> Seth's next deck is all, all oh, battles and all MDFCs. That's it. I, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like heaven. I'm I'm uh, down. <laughs> Kaldine invasion of Kaldine. Um, three and a red, so four mana value, four defense counters. When an ETBs exile all cards from your hand, then draw that many cards. Until end of turn, you may play exiled uh, cards exiled this way. The backside is an enchantment. Discard a land card. It deals two damage to any target. Whenever you discard a land, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. All right, fill with the B. This Seth and I finally have consensus Richard. here, both on an A. This is a good one. This is a good one. Richard actually likes a battle. So what do you like about this battle, Richard, now that you're a, a fan of the card type for the first time? <laughs> the backside is pretty good. So the backside chucking lands to deal two damage. And then not only that, but you get to start exiling cards off the top and playing them. And then the front is uh, whatever that MDFC you really love is, Seth. But you can play, <laughs> you can play yeah. the discarded cards, essentially, until next turn. So I think it's a pretty strong card overall. I... I think so as well. Like I, you get some exile synergies through so the traditional, you know, good and prosper, prosper. type stuff where you like everything. But I mean, even it's just like a self wheel. It's not bad getting to get rid of some extra cards. You get the bonus. And then the backside, I think is just really, really strong. Like even if you're, if you build around it, then it's certainly, you know, absolutely busted. If you're doing loam shenanigans, ways to get lands back from your graveyard. But even without that, the fact that you can snipe things and be generating card advantage, even if you just like flood out and draw too many lands, this is a way you can turn those into new cards and into some damage. That seems worth it to me. Like, I think you could just jam this in a generic red deck, right? And get value out of it. Bill. Yeah, and Nick yeah. Bills. So, so Bill says no. I, I started <laughs> this, is this good in? as an A, but then I thought about the play pattern of the front side, which is still not bad, but it's four mana, so you won't really have mana left to cast anything after casting this, so you have to rely on casting as much as you can of your old hand in the next turn. Unless you do this yes. on turn eight and still somehow have more than four cards in hand. And then you cast this and have three cards in hand. So now you draw three. And then maybe you can cast the three, probably, actually. That's turn eight, though. I think it plays a little clunkier than it looks. Like, when I first looked at it, I was sure this is an auto... In no. I don't like the word auto-include in command in general. But it seemed generically good. Now I think it's very good in Prosper or very low curve deck. So you can play this on turn four and just be sure to cast like four cards from Exile. The backside is super interesting. It just smooths out everything flooding. Like you can't flood anymore pretty much. And that's pretty cool. Uh, just don't think it's a generically good. I think you have to keep in mind that if you have two six drops in hand, you're not going to cast any of them, actually. So maybe <laughs> don't cast this on four and then... You should wait till six mana that. to cast the evasion. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't I, I really... Is this the first card where we kind of wheel but have until next turn to yes. use? Like, I think that's actually very sneakily strong. Especially if you're doing unfair things. You just bank seven cards. Whoa. You cast this next turn. 
you know, rip um, uh, the name escapes me. You know, the, the red staple that generates a billion mana from your opponent's oh, hand. Oh, Jessica's Will, yeah. Jessica's or, yeah. Will, uh, Mana Geyser, whatever, right? You pop off of the 14-card hand, and then you can pass in flames, like, go nuts, do whatever. You can even... Uh, burn this in this process and flip it to get the backside to keep going if you really want. So I think you get some pretty gross things with this. I I'm curious how this actually plays out. Maybe we're just in magical Christmas land and like no one. <laughs> it's the fill case where you just discard two six drops and be happy you have some on curve things to play and we call it a day. <laughs> I mean, it reminds me a little bit of memory jar. The way it wheels and you get the cards like for an extra turn. There's a little bit of a memory jar feels and. I think that that is going to be more powerful than people think. Plus, like, the floor is, like, really good in Prosper. And I know that's a meme, <laughs> but Prosper is also really popular. So the fact that it's, like, an auto-include in one of the best commanders or most popular commanders, that has to mean something, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, invasion of Karsis. I don't know where Karsis is. Two <laughs> red, red. Four defense counters. When it ETBs, it deals three damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Uh, so it doesn't hit people nor battles. The backside is ward, pay two life. Whenever you cast a spell, uh, it deals two damage to each opponent. Uh, we, we're down on this one. Seth, Seth found what he didn't like. We're all Whoa. C's. <laughs> the, yeah, you just don't want Anger of the Gods effects in Commander, and this is an expensive Anger of the Gods effect. So it's like... A really bad sweeper. And then the backside, I guess, like, someone's going to go off with it in Spell Slinger and it'll be cool, like a gutter sniper or whatever. But I don't know. It just, it, nothing about this excites me. I, I guess if you'd play it, it would be in a Spell Slinger deck to try to take advantage of the backside. But the front side's not even a spell. So you get, like, a non-bow with the front side not being a spell to trigger your other synergy. So I, if anything, I'm tempted to put it as a D. Like, I, I don't really see the uses for this. Wait, the front side is a spell. Right? The back side says. Well, but like it's. It depends if you need instant or sorcery. Or like the back you're not triggering just needs your Talrand or spells. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, guess. like, you could just play this and play, like, creatures. So you could, like, kobold combo or something and kill someone. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> like, it's not, it's not like whenever you cast instant or sorcery, it's whenever you cast a spell. So. Yeah, yeah but does your kobold copy want to. Or deck want to be playing in Anger of the Gods? You have <laughs> It's not like you get the backside without first drafting the board. Like, that seems a little bit awkward. <laughs> what if you need to stabilize it? Everyone has the toughest three or less creatures in the battlefield. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think the card's bad. All right. Uh, three rares left to go Segovia. Two and a blue. Four defense counters. When it enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one blue Kraken creature tokens with trample. Non-creature spells... Oh, the backside is non-creature spells you cast have Convoke. At the point of your end step, untap up to four creatures. It's a 3-3 three, three Serpent. This card's ridiculous. Yeah, so I've seen the video. B's for Seth... Or B's for me and Phil. A for Seth. So, you so like this, is the, this is the rare battle... That it's all about the backside for me. The front side is not, it's not on curve. Like two one ones, that's what two mana is kind of the going right. Two mana instant speed, even in a lot of cases. So the front side, you're paying a bit of a battle tax. The backside, though, being able to convoke all of your non creature spells is a re ridiculously strong ramp effect. Like if you build around this a little bit and you're a go wide style deck, you can just dump your hand really quickly the turn that you flip this, and then you get to leave up interaction during your opponent's turn to protect your board. If you need to Teferi's protection to phase out your creatures or to counter something, because it's going to untap your creatures, kind of like a mini wilderness reclamation. So for me, I think the backside is like such an incredibly strong payoff that this is a battle that is worth playing with the intention being to flip it. Still a B though, right? It's what you play it and just any green deck you need to have non-creature spells so need... and creatures to convoke so it's a build around like i'm thinking about playing this in my token deck but because of that it's so, so so yeah i mean yes you do need a decent amount of creatures to make it work i don't know if it's like and you do need non-creatures i don't know if it's that high of a bar though when you consider like 
some of the most popular like blue commanders you got like talrans you got min wily illusionist like a lot of those decks are naturally going to be like going wide anyway even something like urza like is going to have a lot of artifacts that are non-creature spells so i feel like it's not it's not that much of a build around there's going to be decks that can't take advantage of it obviously but i feel like there's enough decks that take advantage of it without even trying that it's going to that it's more than a bead for me i think in that sense I'm trying to think if I would put this in birds. I think this, of all the cards we've talked about, this is most likely to be playable in birds because birds have random vigilance. You can also untap. Like, you can actually abuse this really hard because you can attack with vigilance, convoke, and then you have a wilderness wreck at end of turn. Um, if you don't have vigilance, you still get to untap, and then you can hold up to Fairy's Pro or something with your birds. So I think this is actually very strong. Uh, I think it's a B, maybe it's an A. I don't know if you just slam it in random decks, though. I think you really need to have an explicit purpose. But I mean, I could I could see sets A it's, arguments. This, I think this is so one of the stronger explosive. one of the stronger ones, and it is all backside. And it's also just yeah. a three three though, so it dies to um, whatever the last card we talked about was. <laughs> <laughs> it, does. it does. Although once you once you get the backside, you're just countering everything your opponent does. So your your all your counters become force of wills essentially with convoke, which is pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna I try mean, this that, one. That's a wilderness wreck on the back. So like, if you have a Toski, this is like all good, right? Oh. <laughs> you hit with everything, oh, yeah. draw a bunch of cards, <laughs> untap the team. Now you have basically unlimited mana to interact <laughs> before it gets to your turn again um and then toski untaps which is an indestructible blocker so that's hilarious right oh. uh, <laughs> bird bird staple <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i really like this card I, I think it's one of the the better ones of the set uh okay theros surely this must be enchantment base uh two and a white Four defense counters. When it ETB, search your library for an aura god or demigod card. Reveal it and put it in your hand and shuffle. The backside is Afara. It has lifelink and indestructible as long as you control at least three other enchantments. Whenever another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. 4-4. Four, four. Uh, we have bees across the board. Uh, good in enchantress decks, I'm assuming. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the backsides, this is another backside battle for me. The front side's okay, but, like, the backside's one of the strongest enchantresses we've ever seen, right? I know it's, like, more mana than something like Sethus, but 4-4 four, four, lifelink, indestructible, and an enchantress, and it's ETB rather than cast. So if you have whatever reanimation synergies or whatever blink synergies or anything, like, you're going to get even more card advantage. I feel like I'd play this in every enchantment deck. Being able to tutor you're, a forest. You're also like, casting the backside. So when when the battle flips, you cast the backside. So you get to trigger other enchantresses you have on the battlefield. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's three mana tutor, which is really strong, right? It's for for enchantress decks. Um, Although it only yeah. gets auras, so you can't just get any enchantment. Oh, so there is a little bit of narrowness right, with the tutoring, yeah. but still like. Kenner's Transformation, Wild Growth, Dark Seal Mutation. Like, if you build with it in mind, you should have enough forest to get. Hmm. And the like, backside's really good. Yes, the God part is also good. But yeah, Auras, I kind of thought this was just... Hmm. It's still a it's B. I mean, like if you build around but Auras, yeah. sure. But, uh, huh. Demigod is probably just flavor text. <laughs> but God, you can get Heliod or something. That seems, seems good. You get like Daxos or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's gods. I mean, it's probably finding God Tribal too. Like a lot of those yeah. are enchantments. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Last rare is Tolvada. Three white and a black. Five defense counters. When it ETBs, return target non-battle permanent from your graveyard to the battlefield. The backside is an enchantment creature tokens you control get plus one plus zero and have life link. At the beginning of your end step, create a one one white and black spirit creature token with flying uh bees for seth and phil c for richard eh. why do you, why like all the way down at c well, you, you really want this in like spirits or tokens or anything no oh. i thought what about the front side just, just reanimating a permanent's not bad right and it's 
it's blinkable. But your I mean, tokens, like, what are you reanimating? <laughs> nah, the token. Well, no, I no, mean, no, no. Like the, the token buffs itself a, on the back uh, backside. You just get a two-one lifelink flyer at the end of turn, but you get a blinkable obsidat aid that seems at least yeah, I notice. Like this can go okay, probably infinite with something. It feels all about the blink synergy. Yes. You can buy that. So it goes good in blink decks, not token decks or not spirit decks, but blink decks. I I'm more of like reanimator decks like just playing it like it's it's a reanimation spell that can get your five portal man, to phyraxia or think five minutes <laughs> reanimate well it's any permanent so if you have have things other than creatures you want to, re to reanimate it helps a little bit like what's, what's the cheapest like permanent reanimation spell we have i think five i think it's five like obsidat's aid and folk okay. justice okay. so if you want to reanim reanimate more than just creatures i think it has some appeal there and then the backside's just like, I don't know, like, I don't even know if I'd flip it in a reanimation deck, but uh, it's it's okay. You get a body each turn, I guess. Like, lifelink is kind of nice, but I wouldn't play it in tokens, though, because you're right. What are you going to reanimate in a token deck? Token reanimator would be a tough a tough theme to pull up, I think. <laughs> you can't, it was like, you'd reanimate battles, but it's like, non-battle permanence. Why? Yeah. <laughs> Battles yeah, be are overpowered. Strong, Seth, battles are to too good. <laughs> See, I'm telling you. Look at look at my grades. Battles busted. Even Watsy knows. <laughs> Can't have them reanimated. Okay. Those are all the rares. There are a lot of uncommons. Um, yep. I think how many uncommons are there? There's 20 uncommons. They mostly suck, and I, I know they suck because even Seth says they suck. <laughs> so we're gonna go. <laughs> we're gonna go over uh, some of the ones that potentially could be very good. Uh, so, Ergamon. Sound, sounds like a, a Pokemon or something. Digimon. Uh, red, green. So, two. Very cheap. Five defense counters. When an ETBs create a treasure token, then you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. The backside is a 3-4 trample. When an ETBs, you may discard a card. If you do, search your library for a land or battle card. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Now, Seth thinks this is a B. Phil, C. Myself, D. I mean, Where's okay. Where's going, Seth? It's, Where's it's, Ergamon it's, going? It's only two mana. Only two mana. It makes a treasure. So that's already okay. nice. Like, okay. And then it fills your graveyard. You get something in your graveyard that you want to reanimate or flashback. The backside, like, ignore it. Like, I, I don't even care. <laughs> I don't think it exists. But the, the front side, like, isn't that just a fine card if you're a deck that's, like, reanimating graveyard synergies like anything along those lines isn't it just like yeah okay like a nice little value play they the ramp, you fill your graveyard but yeah that's the colors are a little see at, at least it, i guess there's better cards uh the backside if you if you need the discard then the backside actually helps you as well and you can get a land or a maybe a battle if you play another one <laughs> You have to deal five damage. To yeah, them. yeah, yeah. I think that everything that creates a treasure and does something else needs to be looked at. Since, like, Deadly Dispute, for example, it turns out to be insanely good. It's a bit obviously better, but this one seems like, yeah, this on the edge of playable. Only if you can really get value out of the discard draw card, though. This is two mana. Make a treasure token. Yeah, loot. So it's one. Yeah. But would you Isn't not just fine? play like Thrill of Possibility or whatever, or Cathartic Reunion, or basically any of the much better ones? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Rather than be in Gruel, like of all, you have to be Gruel of all things. So you're like Gruel Reanimator. Um, <laughs> this is a tough ask. And you're making treasure tokens in Gruel. Like you're playing green. Like you don't really need treasures. Like, eh. uh, flicker something that flickers and creates a treasure can uh, get like really mad at it, and, and you can get there. <laughs> or, or what if you have Nykthos? <laughs> it's a pip on the battlefield. That's <laughs> that's 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 all battle. What if you have Clothis? Like literally, you ignore all text and you just like you add pips to Nykthos, or you, you blink it. it. <laughs> <laughs> that is the TLDR of this cast. Yes. <laughs> oh. Oh, I, 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 I don't believe Seth. At, I, I'm, I'm going to check all your gruel decks from now on. I better see this card in your gruel deck. 
I don't the value, Richard. You. The value. Did you did you did you invest in battles? Seth? Did you have a shoebox no. full of Urgamods somewhere? No. Oh no, not yet, not yet. Uh, okay. Um, uh, how about Zendikar? This one's an interesting one, I think. It's Three and a okay. green. Three defense counters. Search your library for up to two basic lands. Put them on the battlefield. Tap then shuffle. Explosive vegetation. Backside is a 4-4. Four, four. Vigilance haste. As long as Awakened Skyclave is on the battlefield, it's a land in addition to its other types. Tap to add one mana of any color. So it's like a Dryad Arbor or something on the back. That's 4-4 four, four. Vigilance haste. What do we have here? We have C for Phil. Phil Phil's not a believer. Seth at A, Richard at B. Okay, we're all over the place. C, Phil, why is this card decidedly out? Sorry to say it, but it gets basics. That's my <laughs> that's my mark. Yes. I, I play Sky yes. Short Slam every day, but uh, I don't know four mana for just two basics. Then I, that's my two basics I play for Cultivate already. <laughs> so I'm playing with my... <laughs> that's the exact same thought I had. <laughs> I don't know. At least it's just three damage to flip it. But then it's a uh, strong mana dog. I don't know if the... i rather play Sky Short Claim. And even that, i rather play Nature's Law and any of them over this. Yeah, it's... Yeah, you can blink it if you so, have so, enough so, basics. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> the upside is Isn't it's it four good? mana, three lands, right? Yeah. Because you could, you, could, you could get the two lands and you could conceivably deal three damage to get another land. So you, un- you know, by the time you untap and are ready to cast again, you can, you can that actually have great. a lot of... Actually, and it's, 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 said it's, said it's two basics. Yeah, that's rough. So, do you, Seth, you put it as A. Give me, give me a ranking of four mana green ramp here. What are you putting this above? I mean, this is this is number one, right? I guess I can see an argument for I can see an argument Skyshot. for stuff that can get non basics, but and still, untapped. like Skyshot claims untapped uh, template discovery as okay, well. Okay, okay, so Skyshot. Okay. Path. Oh, so this is def- isn't this just clearly better than Ranger's Path? Like, there's no. Well, Ranger's Path gets duels, right? Oh, uh, okay. Okay, so, okay. Like, so discount I, I, the... I was willing to discount, like, mana fixing. Like, I, I, was, I was willing to discount mana fixing for the one upside of, like, one extra land. But I can't discount the basics, <laughs> right? Like, you only have so many basics. The, the real sneaky upside of Ranger's Path and stuff like that is you can grab Triomes. And yes, that fixes your colors, but it allows you to play more non-basics. So you don't have to pull a Tomer and put like 10 basics in your like five color deck and be weird, right? That's the biggest downside I, I feel with this card. And it is very strong. I gave it a B, but I think Rangers Pass Sky Shroud Claim go above it. And then there's arguments to the Guildgate one is could be argued to be better. The cycling one could be argued to be better. Like, you know, th- there's a lot of stiff competition for four mana ramp in green. So I, I will give you that ones that get non-basics would rank ahead of this, but I would say that once you get to ones that only can get basics, I think this offers the most upside, like compared to cycling, compared to, well, uh, there's a kicker one that you can cast for eight mana and kick and put counters on things like this has pips on the battlefield. You can blink it, you can Yarrock it, and it's getting the lands, and it's turning into another land, and it only has three defense counters, so it's actually one of the easiest battles to flip, and the backside creature of 4-4 four, four with haste that's a mana dork, and also a land if that matters, like, that's a fine creature. Like, worst case, it's another source of mana, so I think once you get past the non-basic tutors, this is the best one, and you gotta remember, like, even though people are not as high on these cards as they used to be, according to EDHREC, still a lot of people play Migration's Path. A lot of people play Explosive Vegetation. So I think this is just, like, easily better than those, right? The problem is how many four mana ramp spells are you playing? So if there's the two non-basic ones that rank ahead of it, are you playing three four mana ramp spells? That That's, that's the sticking point, right? That's... But the 4-4 the four, four body is actually very strong because it lets you flip other battles... Uh, yep. It doesn't consume your mana because it's vigilance, right? So your land is still good to go. You can defend battles as well because it's a 4-4 four, four body. Like the, the backside is actually like a lot better than just a land in terms of combat, but it dies to removal. 
And you got to remember too that non basics that only matters in some decks. If you're playing a mono green deck or even a two color deck, yeah. the difference between getting basics and non basics is negligible. But if you're playing a four color deck or a three or five color deck, then being able to grab your triomes really matters. So I think in a two color deck, I would argue put this over like Ranger's Path and some of the the ones that can grab non basic for us. Okay, if you have explosive vegetation, do you put this in your deck? Because then you have to explain how this card works to like all new players. <laughs> that is the downside. A lot of people gotta read the card. Yeah, they gotta like take it out down. and flip it and read it. <laughs> uh, is it better to just play explosive vegetation? <laughs> I mean, I think power level wise, I, it's worth it. But who wants to read all these cards? <laughs> all right, uh, new Capanna, white and a black. So two mana value, four defense counters. When it ETBs, you may sacrifice an artifact or creature. When you do, exile target, artifact, or creature and opponent controls. The backside is equipment. When equipped creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature and each other creature you control that shares a creature type with it. Equip one. Uh, C for Phil. B's for Seth and myself. Isn't this card you decent? It. You can blink it, Phil. You can blink yeah. it. Pips. But then you have pips, pips on the battlefield. I... So I'm not too interested in the backside because it's tribal and attack based or combat based. And there's Ride of, of Oblivion, which is two mana flashback. Exile, sacrifice a non-land permanent, exile a non-land permanent, and you can do it twice. So I guess this is so much better than I would. I guess I could play two of those effects in some decks, but, uh, Probably not. I guess if it's the deck that really wants a second card that plays like Ride of Oblivion. Is this even the second worst sacrifice something to destroy something? I don't know. Maybe. I'm just super unimpressed. Except for the name. Holy Frazzle Cannon sounds super funny. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not interested <laughs> in the backside at all. So, yeah. Ooh, it exiles. Interesting. Wait, does it exile? Yeah. I I actually think the backside's pretty strong on this one. That's actually the main reason that I am like kind of high on it. I feel like, yeah, it's a tribal card. Richard can play it in his tribal decks or whatever, but I think it's sneaky good in token decks. A lot of token decks incidentally have creatures with the same name. So I would be imagining like uh Thales or whatever, the white black, the thing that makes a ton of spirits on your end step. Like you're making all these tokens. So you have lots of sack fodder to use this as removal. And then you flip it and each turn you're just one mana to equip is super cheap, but each turn you attack, you're just growing your entire team. So that's where I kind of see it fitting in is like, yeah, to it's fine in tribal, but I actually think token decks, white, black token decks are probably where it shines. Would you play it? Cause don't you have the, the Warhammer? I was thinking like yeah, Melius yeah, yeah. Kalgar, uh, like, do you think it's worth considering for something like that? So I'm already making room for invasion of Segovia and the new shark typhoon shark. Uh, so I don't have room for this, but honestly in token decks, this seems Maybe, a, yeah, I put it at B. In poke token decks, hey. it's probably good, except for mine. I don't want to attack. But. <laughs> for, I, I won't play it, but the rest of you is very good in your token decks. <laughs> what do you think, Richard? You're the tribal master. Will you play this in your tribal decks if you're in the colors? I like it. The, the front side is very respectable. Uh, the back side is very respectable. It is cheap. Uh, so I, I actually really like it. I think it's also exile removal which is kind of important as well. So it's a sack outlet, exile removal, and then you can pump your team. Uh, and then because you're pumping your team, you're like a go wide deck. And if you're a go wide deck, you have ample sack fodder. Uh, so I think the card works well together. Um, what would you play this in? I don't know. Any mm -hmm. white black tokens, any white black tribe. I think zombies would really like this if you're Orzhov zombies for whatever reason. Yep. Uh, I, I think it's pretty strong. I'm surprised it's actually uncommon. I think it's like one of the stronger, <laughs> <laughs> one of the stronger ones. Because when I evaluated most of these, uh, especially the uncommon ones, but even the rares of mythics, I'm like the backside is like utterly meaningless. Like not only can you not get to it, but it kind of sucks. Uh, but yeah. this backside is actually easy to get to. Uh, it's only four damage, and it's actually very good. And the equip is very low. It's one mana. They remove your creature. You just move it over somewhere else. Uh, so I I really like this card. See, and, there's uh, good battles. 
yeah, that's those are all the battles. Uh, there's a ton of <laughs> uncommon battles that we've put ceremoniously at D. Um, <laughs> but I don't know what do, what do you guys think are battles fun? Are we gonna play them? Are they good? Are, is, are we they are fun. rewarded for playing them? I, I feel it's all coming down to blink effects. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, I'm gonna look at Phil's blink deck afterwards. He's gonna have zero battles in it. I Maybe. bet you anything because there are like some pretty scary things you can be blinking aside from like these weird battles, right? I will Seth, say, are you still B's and A's on everything? <laughs> I mean, I, I dropped a couple of my grades, so I, I came down a little bit. But I will say, like. I was highest on the battles. If you look at our grades, like I was consistently more or less about a letter grade higher than the the rest of the crew this week. So I think I'm the one that has the highest hopes for this card type. And I was surprised at how low we had them ranked. Like when we said, hey, let's do a battle tier list. I was thinking, oh, we're going to have like all these cards are going to be really good. A bunch of A's, a bunch of S's like these are going to be really impactful. But even being the person that's most hyped for these. I came away from this feeling like, eh, I don't know, I guess uh, maybe battles, at least not yet, are going to have a very big impact on Commander. Like, there's some stuff that I think is okay, and some stuff that's good in specific decks, and some stuff that you can build around, but I don't know, like, I, I, I don't know, am I wrong to think that this card type is not going to, like, change Commander? And this is, again, coming from the person who is highest on this card type. I think it's a 60 card format. Uh, card type. I, I would have rather them have the backside be symmetrical, kind of like the planes uh, you have in plane chase, and the front side anyone can attack or defend. Uh, then Ooh. it becomes very interesting, right? Like you try to flip this, but then two people want it flipped, one person does it, and then you're all trying to block mm. and attack. I'm pretty sure they didn't do this because the rules of magic don't allow this. But it would be <laughs> yeah. pretty cool if like anyone could try to attack, anyone could try to block. And then when it flips, it's like this huge global enchantment that stuff happens. Uh, then it would be like a very, like every effect would have some kind of purpose, right? Because some decks would like it, some decks would not like it. Uh, but instead we have this where they're all kind of just, eh. I mean, it's and maybe you get just, value, maybe you don't. It's kind of hard. Maybe the next battle type is like a global battle where everybody can af- attack and defend it. Or you have to protect it and it's a static effect or something. Like, I, I think the card type played... Once people understood it, it plays very smooth. Uh, It is a bit of a skill check, though. Like I think a lot of people attack battles when they should go face instead. Maybe not in Commander. That's why I mean, in Commander, you usually overkill. In 60-card formats, like at the pre-release, somebody attacked me for 10 or attacked my battles for 10 and not me. And then, yeah, I'm still at 20. (laughs) And then if you have a Wrath, you can get punished. I like the the card type. They went a little safe in the context of Commander, I think, which is fine. Not every card has to be crazy. They are pretty fun though. Like I, I, I think I'd be happier to see like what's the invasion of uh, explosive vegetation. Like this is way more fun than just playing explosive vegetation. So it's it's a cool card type. I like it. Some of them, most of them are bad, though. Very I, unplayable. I will also say, like, I've enjoyed how they've played so far. Like, limited experience of, like, early access day, but it does add a new dimension to the game, and I think that dimension is going to be pretty fun in Commander. You're going to have this additional option of, like, who to attack, some uh, additional politicking going on. So even if this first batch of battles doesn't end up being a bunch of, like, S-tier power level breaking the format stuff, I do think when they show up in Commander games, it is going to add a, a fun little a fun little element. Plus, you can blink them. <laughs> and they're pips for Nick, those. <laughs> I got to see this Nick those blink deck that we're all doing. <laughs> uh, there's also that card that dumps all uh, battles on the battlefield too. So there's some like yes. battle, um, support. So it'll be interesting to see what impact these have on Commander. Uh, I'll check back in a couple of weeks, see what Seth's decks look like. And he better have <laughs> a lot of battles. MDFC <laughs> and battle ratio to his decks. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's... That's our battle tier list. Thank you, everyone. Uh, let us know what you think of battles. Anything you disagree with? Are we misevaluating them? Are they actually secretly OP? Have we overlooked any synergies? Or what decks would you play battles in? Uh, I'd be interested to, to read and learn more. Uh, so yeah, leave a comment. And uh, we'll see you all here back next week. See you, everyone. <laughs>